neighborhood kids today. Um, before we get started, do you think you could introduce yourself and say what you do in the band? My name is John, and I play drums. Very nice. And do you want to like say a little bit about your other bandmates too? Maybe describe them each in two or three words. Billy is hilarious and cheerful. George is magical and weird. <laughs> Emily is um, like a. Emily, it was kind of hard to describe. She's a. Uh, Theatrical and uh, she's necessary. Yes. And she's fine. She's fine. She's got a lot going on. Very nice. Um, how would you describe your sound to somebody who's never heard you play before? Um, I'd call it experimental pop rock. Mainly based around pop, but experimental because like especially with our new sound, some some songs are kinda like borderline like Taylor Swift Red and some songs are kinda like still just like a rock band with a girl in it. We're kind of trying to experiment with all those tools, especially. What direction do you think you're heading? Kind of a fusel of both. That's, uh, we're in the middle of our record right now. We recorded a batch of it in New York, and then we're recording a batch of it in Los Angeles. Um, so also uh, surrounding wise, I definitely think that it affects a band sound. Some bands will purposely like record some songs in New York, some in LA. For us, there's no method. It's just how it worked out. It's just a timing issue with, with how everything's going. But uh, we're trying to fuse both, and especially with technology. Rather than just like slapping auto tune on songs, we actually use technology as like, uh, hey, you know, we don't have a didgeridoo, but we can get one on this program. If you know what a didgeridoo yeah, is. I have heard of those. Okay, it's like a, for example, just like, you know, we're using technology to our advantage, not just as like a coat our voices in auto tune, but like a. Yeah. You know, we can kind of do any any instrument we want in the world is one click away. So. Super cool. so could you tell us a little bit about how the band got started, maybe about what your first sound was like with your different singer and how it's evolved since then? Um, basically, uh, George and Billy knew each other for many, many years. And I was in a different band. I was in a victory band, that horrible, horrible record label. <laughs> and uh, when my band kind of went down the tubes, they were in a band that was like the most popular local. So when I got home from touring and everything, I kind of looked at some options and uh, wound up being like, well, I could move to here and join this band or move there and do that. But you know what? It'd be nice to kind of stay based in New York City. So I met up with those guys. And then uh, that band kind of didn't work out. So we got a new singer, Emily, kind of fused this whole thing to call it Neighborhood Kids. And so, if you weren't in a band, what would you Uh, I'd want to be a lawyer. Really? Mm -hmm. Knack for law? Uh, not, I have a knack for arguing. <laughs> not necessarily for law, more of really good at debating. Very cool. So, um, are there any bands that you guys as a whole, or just you personally, look up to or admire, or base your style off of, or use for inspiration? Um, there's definitely some. I mean, there's a lot though, but if I could kind of highlight on a few. Um, we, we really, really, really like the like independent approach that like uh, Macklemore and uh, Paradise Fears and um, some other bands that kind of, even Bloodhound Gang, if you know who they are. Yeah. They have that, that mammal song. Mm -hmm. But actually, a band like Bloodhound Gang, they're actually very smart, independent. No one kind of dips into their, uh, into their their finances, isn't, but they're very in control of what they do. So pretty much any band that's in control of what they do is a band we immediately admire on like a business end. Uh, musically, you know, Third Eye Blind, um, even like, uh, there's this band, Imagine Dragons, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So in that same vein, if you could have your dream show where you play at any venue you want or you tour with any band that you want, where would it be? It, I mean, it's, I'm from New York, but I'd probably say it if I didn't. I'd say Madison Square Garden with Prince headlining. And um, I love 311, so 311 direct support. And uh, we're like really good friends with Paradise Fear, so us and them, kind of the smaller bands on the show. They're cool guys. Yeah. So, Prince you're headlining. Definitely, yeah. Alright, so can you tell us a little bit about your new album? Yes, surely. And I also can tell you what we'll be up to this summer. Sounds good. But, uh, New, new album, um, like it's been a constant struggle, like I said, between the rock elements and the pop and the, and the kind of, so we have some songs on this record that only Emily sings, which 
which is a new thing for us because our old EP was always back and forth. This is the first time in her songs that she sings only. Just, you know, George Who otherwise? Uh, George. Yeah, he's the male vocal on, on some stuff. But, uh, you know, there's like one or one or two songs as of now that she's the only one singing. It's not like we're going to stick with that. Again, that's like the experimental side of what we're doing. Is it's like, you know, this girl, she's she's got a wider range of, I mean, a wide array of, uh, of like, what she can do with her voice. So we've kind of been trying to experiment, like, her lows and, like, her way up high type of thing. She's experimenting. Will George have any of his own songs? Probably not full. Probably not full. Maybe an acoustic one. I, I, I personally, I mean, I don't really know how to write music and just the drum. But I know like about concepts of songs, and I think conceptually, um, I think it'd be cool to have like a Just George and an acoustic type of the thing we could play at shows. Just George, just the acoustic. We do have a few we're working on. It probably probably won't get recorded in LA on the second half. So, if you had to estimate how many show you, shows you've done so far, or if you just know off the top of your head. How many would you say? Our band as a whole? Yes. Probably only about 20. We spent a lot of time promoting. But you've gotten pretty adept on stage, kind of got to hang things. Yeah, definitely. Have you had any embarrassing moments you want to share? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> definitely. Um, George fell. He, uh, you know, the bass drum? Right. There's always a microphone that uh, mics the bass drum. He fell over it. And I'm trying to remember where. Somewhere in the country. Was he okay? He was embarrassed as hell. But uh, that was a bad one. Um, one time our old band, um, we played uh, a high school. Uh, that's with the old singer and stuff. Right. And um, the, the PA, like the microphone system itself, uh, broke. And no one could hear us. And we just kind of were like, what the hell do we do? Just kind of like... Did it come back on? Uh, no, not for a while. It wound up being one of those things where, like, uh, everyone kind of stood around and was like, uh, and some poor girl who was trying to run the whole show was like freaking out and stuff. And you're we like, dude, chill. Don't worry about it. You know? But, uh, yeah, that's kind of why we stopped even doing like smaller, weird shows. Because it all kind of does is drain us. It kind of wears us out. Like, so guys, good show tonight. Promoting probably gets you further. Yes, exactly. So, just to end on a happy note, are there any best moments from shows? Um, probably uh, our first show at Paradise Fears. That was our first show ever. It was when the all sold out with those wow. guys. That was cool. Just, you know, kind of walked out. The whole, the whole crowd kind of had a good response right from when we walked on. And that was really good. And then in Los Angeles, we played a sold out show as well. And it was kind of cool. Like We're like, wow, you know, like, Two major cities. We have, you know, a good amount of CDs sold. We've sold about seven thousand CDs. Wow. Yeah. Well, download cards, but we've sold about seven thousand of them. We've gotten lucky in those two major markets, and uh, we're actually hitting Seattle for the first time on this tour. So we're hoping that we kind of grab that one too, so we can kind of start to you know, do our thing. That's nice. okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Is it, are there, do you have any last words that you want to say? Um, we're going to be doing more uh, private party shows and promoting at Rocket to the Moon's last tour in July. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. We'll be there. I don't know if you're will going you to... Will be at the DC day? Yep, we will be. See you there. And um, in August, we are going to be opening a tour. We cannot say what. So when, uh, hopefully this gets posted soon. Hopefully you watch it. Two weeks. Two weeks, that's fine. And so, yeah, look out for our August tour dates. It will be posted everywhere once we are allowed to release it. Sounds good. Thank you.